Hey guys, in this video we'll cover stacking multiple modifiers. Quick reminder, this lesson is from our complete intro to Blender course that we're offering for free for a limited time on YouTube. If you're new here, I'd recommend starting at the beginning of the course. I've added a link in the description. All right, go ahead and open up Blender and let's jump right in. To begin this lesson, we'll continue using the file that you were working on from the previous lesson. I have mine open here. If you don't have this file open, you were doing something else, or you're coming back and you didn't save this file, next to this lesson, there'll be a link to download the file I have here. So go ahead and do that and then open that file up and you'll be right where I am. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about how you can stack multiple modifiers. So just to review where we're at, I'll press tab on my keyboard to switch to edit mode and over in the modifier area, so you click on the wrench icon and over here, next to the bevel modifier that's being applied, I'll click on the display to hide it. So the underlying shape that we have here is just this simple house-like shape. Then we applied a bevel modifier, so I'll go ahead and turn that one back on. And that bevel modifier is now beveling this. So we'll press tab to go back to object mode, and it's adding a bevel to all the edges. Now, you can add multiple modifiers to the same object. So let's go ahead and try that. Hey everyone, we're doing something a little unconventional here, and for a limited time, we're giving you access to one of our paid courses for free right here on YouTube, and this lesson is a part of it. Blender is a beast of a program to learn, but with the right approach, it doesn't have to be. That's why we created Blender Academy, to help people build the Blender skills they need and then go out and get the jobs they want. We hope you find these lessons to be a good investment of your time. If you do, and you're serious about learning Blender, head over to our website and continue learning with us. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. And now back to the lesson. Over in the modifier area at the top where it says add modifier, go ahead and click to drop that down. And let's come down to the generate column and go way down where it says subdivision surface and go ahead and click on it. And it will add a subdivision surface modifier. Notice that it's down here. To make this simple, let's go ahead and up next to where it says bevel, there's a little arrow drop down here. Go ahead and click on it and it will fold that up so you don't see all the options for the bevel. And in the subdivision modifier, we're not worried about the details of this one just yet. We'll cover it in a future lesson, but I do want you to, where it says levels viewport, I want you to click on this right arrow here twice to get it up to a level of three. And then for now, so we're not worried about everything else here, just click this arrow to fold it down. Now zoom in on your house-like object here a little bit closer. And at first you might say, well, I'm not really sure what this subdivision modifier is doing. Doesn't seem like much changed. Now I want you to look at this angle here, this top bevel here, as you come over to the subdivision modifier and where there's a display here, go ahead and click to toggle it off and notice the difference in how this looks faceted now and then click on it again and it looks far less faceted. Now we're not going to talk too much about what the subdivision modifier is doing here. We'll talk about that in an upcoming lesson, but the point is, is that clearly there is something happening here. So you toggle it off and then you toggle it back on and you say, okay, I guess it's doing something interesting and smoothing that out a bit. Check this out. Come back over to the modifiers area here and to the far right of the subdivision modifier, you'll see this little handle here, these dots that if you click and hold down on them and drag it up and then let go, it replaced the position of the bevel modifier. So it's here first and over here, it did something really wild. The shape is completely different. It doesn't look anything like the house. So what happened here? Well, again, we'll cover the specifics of the subdivision modifier in a future lesson so you can understand why it did this. But the main point of this lesson is that, yes, you can add more than one modifier to an object, and often you will on more complicated things, but the position of those modifiers over here matters. So Blender will take the first modifier and apply it to the geometry and then take the second modifier and apply it to whatever's left. So when the subdivision happens first, it's doing something quite dramatic first, and then the bevel is being applied second. And while you may say, I don't really see any bevels, it turns out it's because there's not really a hard enough edge here to bevel. But that's a topic for a future lesson. The main idea is that the stacking order matters. So if you ever are trying to do something and you think 
two or three modifiers in combination would get the job done, but it doesn't look quite right, try reordering the stack of modifiers and you might get a different result. In a future lesson, we'll give you some best practices for the order that tends to work best, like whether or not you tend to use bevel before subdivision or the other way around, in addition to talking about how that works with some of the other modifiers. But for right now, just knowing that if you click and drag and reorder these and let go, you might get an entirely different result. Now in this case, we don't want this subdivision modifier anymore. So whenever you add a modifier and it's not really working for you, you don't need it anymore. Notice over on the right hand side here, there's a little X. Go ahead and click on that next to the subdivision modifier and that will delete that modifier from the stack. Okay, now that we know we can use multiple modifiers and that the stacking order matters, we're ready to move on to the next lesson. Congratulations, you made it through the lesson. Did you find this video to be helpful? Let us know by giving it a like. If you're ready for the next lesson, you can find it in this playlist. And if you're interested in learning more about how we can help you build the skills you need, head over to blenderacademy.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And until next time, happy blending.